The government plans to have asylum seekers on barges and disuse military bases could cost more than keeping them in hotels, according to a government watchdog. Let's talk to former Conservative uh, government minister, uh, Lord uh, Andrew Robethon, who joins us now. Uh, good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Um, now, the whole point of you know, moving people onto the baby Stockholm barge and, and, and requisitioning these older RAF barracks was because the outcry from the public, quite rightly, about the huge, huge millions, even billions in total sums of money being spent on housing, uh, has, hi, asylum seekers and, uh, and uh, channel migrants in hotels, sometimes in four-star hotels. Uh, now, that's, I think, we pretty much has been ended. But it turns out, according to the National Audit Office, who've looked into the finances of this, um, that we are looking at a one2 billion pound cost of putting the accommodation into these barges or former RAF bases. And that's 46 million pounds more than using hotels. Um, does that surprise you? And does that suggest to you that we should be doing it anyway? Or should we go back to the hotels? Well, Julia, I would say that these are capital costs for doing up uh, decaying old bases. I should say that there was a, a camp in Folkestone uh, about three or four years ago where everybody complained that we were sending refugees and asylum seekers. Um, uh, they complained it wasn't up, it wasn't up to standards for them. Well, I stayed there when I was in the army, and of course it wasn't five star hotel, but it was perfectly adequate. Now we're spending capital costs on doing up some of these places, so they're relatively comfortable. But in the long term, if this continues in the long term, we hope it doesn't. It will be much cheaper, I'm sure, than spending money on expensive hotels. And the other big issue is that, of course, communities do not like having. Um, 100 or 200 uh, people from abroad, well, mostly young men, young men, young men exactly. uh, dumped on them. Yeah, I mean, that's the key thing, isn't it? It's what, what's the alternative and where do they go? Because we know that a lot of these barracks had to be done up because apparently they were good enough for our soldiers, but not good yeah. enough uh, for the migrants because apparently those rules are different. But again, I think a lot of people watching this will be shouting at us both right now on the telly and the radio and saying, the answer is for these people, A, not to be here in the first place, B, to be processed much more quickly, only here for a matter of weeks or a couple of months, and then deported or assessed as being uh, here legally and allowed to get on with their lives here. Um, but we know that's not going to happen any time soon. Well, Julia, I agree with you, or A, B and C, but of course the government is trying today to push through its Rwanda policy. Now, the Rwanda policy is absolutely not perfect. Um, I don't think you'd start from here, as they used to say. But um, it's deserved, it's designed to deter people from coming. And we need to deter people from coming in their home countries and whatever. Of course, many of these people are indeed genuine refugees and asylum seekers. But most of them are coming here for very understandable reasons <laughs> to um, lead a better life to a more prosperous country because they're coming from a country which is not prosperous and they will need a much better life here. And when they get here, they very often, if they're admitted to asylum, they very often bring very large extended families as well. And I'm sorry, we need to crack down this. We're trying like mad and we've thwarted every turn by, first of all, um, uh, the, the courts. Second of all, by, I'm afraid, uh, the opposition, the Labour Party and the Liberal Democrat Party who are voting against this whole time. And, you know, this is nonsense. We need to reform the law. And I'm afraid it's a bit late for this government. We need to reform the law and we need to stop people, as we're seeing on the screen now, being, being brought into this country and look at them, they're all young men uh, yeah. because they're coming here to better themselves. Who yeah. can blame them? No, that's the thing. I don't have any issues. I completely understand. It's just, sorry, we, we didn't say we, we wanted them. Now, we know the Archbishop of Canterbury has joined other faith leaders um, in a, a, a new report. I mean, again, it absolutely blows my mind that this man is so out of touch. This is Justin Welby. He's a part of the Independent Commission on the Integration of Refugees, which is, you know, just Wokesville. Uh, and they're calling uh, for the reinstatement of a refugees minister in government. Of course they are. But he's joined by the chief rabbi um, uh, and, and cardinals and, uh, and also uh, uh, Sheikh Ibrahim Mogra as well, uh, on behalf of the, is of the, is the Islamic faith. But he thinks, he, along with these faith leaders, believe that we need a shake-up of what they call the broken asylum system. So that's good. They admit it's broken. But saying that migrants should be eligible to work in the UK pretty much almost immediately, and certainly after six months of waiting for an asylum decision, and given free English language lessons as soon as they arrive. I mean, this is madness, isn't it? This is basically saying, come on in. Um, Julia, I'm always delighted to speak to you because I agree with you about so much. Of course, the asylum, seeker is in, the asylum system is indeed broken because we're not operating properly, because we're constrained by laws, many of which were passed under the Blair government. And we need to 
sort out the asylum system, but not in this way. And I'm afraid Justin Welby, who I like and I think is a very good speaker, Justin Welby needs to look after the people of England rather than all the asylum seekers yeah. and refugees who want to come here, not because they're actually being persecuted or anything like that, but because they want to better themselves. Well, indeed. Uh, and that's why he's saying they should be allowed to work from the but day this they the arrive. Thing, I, I, need I, I, to sort this out. But I mean, this report, including you know, you know, signatory to this is, is Justin Welby is saying basically where we have a shortage of, occup of people available for certain jobs, that, that we should say no. From day one, you can work in those jobs. From day one, so you've got someone who's just got off, paid as people smuggler, travelled across Africa and Middle East, paid a people smuggler three, four, five grand to get across, arrives in this country, probably without any documentation. Oh, we're short, we're short of care workers in the local care home for the elderly and the vulnerable and the disabled. Let's let him go and work there. Are these people out of their frigging minds? I couldn't have put it better myself. But <laughs> look, there's nine million or whatever number of people on out of work benefits or sickness benefits, economically, uh, inactive that should be working and that's where we need to tackle this issue but that, that's a separate issue yeah. frankly to the um the asylum shake-up uh, and look justin welby is very well meaning but let him stand up for the people of britain the yes. people that go to the church of england not for people that come here and then pretend they're converting or say they're homosexual yep. because they say so they can't be sent back i mean all this is you and I both agree all this is complete nonsense. Indeed. I'm just finally, I just want to ask you about the Rwanda bill. Uh, ping pong in the House of Lords and the House of Commons is ongoing. Uh, the bill goes back to the House of Lords tonight that we understand it appears are going to try and reinstate some of those amendments they put in and that were defeated uh, on, I think, Monday by, by uh, MPs. It's going to keep going. That will delay the bill even more. Do you think just yes or no, Rwanda flight's going to take off at any point this year? I do think they will. Um, the Labour Party will probably vote against us this time and then drop their opposition is my understanding. But look, these are very often lawyers who think yeah. they know better than the legislature because they're, they're influenced by the European court or whatever it may be. We need to get away from the idea that we have the rule of lawyers. We have the rule of law and parliament is sovereign. And really, it really upsets me to see bien passant, stupid people um, <laughs> saying, oh, well, we can't do this because... Uh, we don't do this sort of thing. I'm sorry. Get out there in the real world and see what real people are thinking. And most of the people in this country want to end illegal immigration and indeed end mass immigration as we have at the moment. Lord Reberton, pleasure to speak to you. Glad we've got some sensible people in the House of Lords. Thank you very much Thank indeed you. for joining us. Still with me is Benedict Spence. Just to, uh, your thoughts. Just first, really, I just want to ask you about Justin Welby. I think what we forget about Justin Welby is he doesn't necessarily care about people from the Middle East, Indian subcontinent or, or from North Africa. Actually, what he cares about are people from sub-Saharan Africa, because that's where the majority of Christians in the world are coming from. Yeah. So if he's looking for the long-term benefits of the Church of England, oh. he wants lots of people from there. Self-interest for of course the Church. You can't just say, oh, let all of the Ghanaians and the Nigerians in, but none of the other people. So it has to be couched in the, well, you know, bring us all... But also, isn't it just against that virtue thing? Well, I'm a nice person, so this is what I think, as opposed to looking at the impact yeah. on other people who don't get a say. Again, and again, yeah. he's got a lovely big Lambeth Palace to live in. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, not, they're not all moving into his street, aren't no, they? they? And I'm are. sorry, if you, again, if you've got a teenage daughter, you're going to have some strong views on this. I, I love the fact in America, all the uh, Republican sort of uh, southern state governors started shipping people, uh, the migrants coming over the border over to New York and to, and to yeah. Martha's Vineyard and all where the Democrats live and all the rich people go, oh, we, why are you so awful about immigrants? I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, but they want to deport them all, yeah. They, yeah. There you go. <laughs> and now, now deal with the issue of people who arrive illegally. Absolutely. And I think that that, that sort of out-of-touchness and that desire to just be seen as being nice, is uh, like everybody wants to be nice, but sometimes you need to be firm to be kind to people. And that's what it comes down to when it comes well, to... Well, it depends who you want to be kind to. And the duty of Kelly, uh, the, the Archbishop, and indeed our government, should have, it should be to the British people. And it's not fair to drain other countries of their young people. Good, That's not very good point indeed.